Hi everyone, Paul Harris here, and welcome to part 4 of the Tamiya 112 Honda rc 21 v build. Before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button, click the little bell notification to get notified of all our videos, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below, I read and reply to every comment. All the products you're going to see me use today are linked in the description, there's a link that takes you to a big long list over on the forum, everything I use and links to where you can buy them from, so if you've got any thoughts or queries, have a look there first, and if not, message me directly and I'll see if I can help you. So, we're back with part four. Um, dealing with that tricky front fender, which has been a bit of a nightmare. So that's the goal today, we're going to sand that, make sure it's all alright, prep it for paint, uh, get it primed, we're going to use different colour primers as well, uh, all three, white, black and grey today. Uh, we get all the bodywork primed, get the swing arm frame primed as well, and then we're going to paint bodywork white first, paint LP2 white uh, from Tamiya. Then we need to mask that off for the black, because there's a few portions of the bag that need masking off of black. It, it's mainly where um, some of the bag is actually black and where there's a demarcation between decals and paint. Um, you'll see that as we go along. And then um, spray that black. And then that's the bodywork to be left for a few days to fully cure and make sure we're all okay. And then we can come back and get some decals down. Whether we'll do decals in part five, I'm not sure. Um, I quite like to get some of the engine done because that's where I'm itching to get going. And we can get it in the frame and it'll make the build progress a little bit as well. Um, we're just going to prime the swing arm up and get that painted again in the LPs. Trying to do the whole bike in LPs and we have so far. Probably going to do either LP11, which is the silver colour, or the is it sparkling silver, LP48 I think it is. It's probably going to be the one. I've got my spoons there that we tested last time. I'm going to have a look. I've done other bikes before. Quite happy with the swing arms on those bikes. I'm going to compare it with other colours I've used. I used to use AK Extreme Matte Aluminium. I've used aluminium before. Different tones and what have you. But I think we're going to go with the LP48. So we'll see. How that goes. So that's the goal today. All the body work prepped, primed, painted, swing arm prepped, primed, painted, and that's them done. They can sit and cure at their own free will, free will, at their own leisure, should we say. And then we come back in part five. I think I'm probably going to work on the engine in part five, and then we'll come back probably part six and do the decals. I like letting paint sit for a while before we decal. I always find it maybe unnecessary as such with lacquers, but peace of mind. It's nice to know that FX fully cured and dry. So that's the, that's the plan today. Body work, and let's see how we get them. So let's jump into the build, make a start, and off we go. Okay, so these are all our parts. They've all been cleaned up. Um, all the sanding seams removed. Any parts we filled with say glue have been sanded smooth. Seams have been removed. And this very tricky seam we had on this wheel arch from Fender has been dealt with. So we give it a sand with our sponge sanders like we did in the last video. And I'm going to go around all the body parts and rough them up a touch with some 6000 grade micro mesh. Uh, this just ensures we've got any glue marks off, uh, any sanding marks that are left behind. And that we're nice and smooth and we've got a nice key for our primer, which will be our next step. So make sure all the parts are all nice and roughed up. Then we're going to mount it. So I use a combination of white tack and the micro brushes that I use, take the little brush off the end. So if you've got them, you've used them, take the brush off, put them to one side and make very good mounting points. Be very careful when putting parts on, don't apply too much pressure. Um, it's very easy to snap glue parts in half. So we'll use some white tack, push it underneath the fender, push our micro brush end into it, use the tweezers, make sure it's not in any areas that need to be painted. And there we go, that is that mounted, ready for paint. Now we've got some auto airbrush cleaner, a small piece of kitchen roll. And we're going to wipe over all the panels to remove any fingerprints, grease, any residue left behind at all. And this will give us a nice clean surface for priming. And it'll just make life a lot easier. So just make sure you're thorough and you get all the surface. Once it's been done, grab a dry piece and just lightly buff over and dry it off. Now on parts like this front fairing, there's holes in there, so you can use these to your advantage. So again, get a micro brush, cut the end off, pop it in, give it a twist, and you got a nice secure mounting point for the brush. With the parts like the swing arm, again, we've got holes in the sides, so you can utilize these to our advantage. 
Now, as you say, take the brush off. That leaves us with a nice pointy part. Weigh up your options. So, will it fit in there? It does, but it's not very tight. So, yeah, not the best mounting point. So, we'll go through the side. Through the swing arm mounting point where it attaches to the frame instead. This will give us a much better mounting point and it won't swing around in the breeze because the last thing you want while you're painting is anything moving or falling off. So there we go, in through the side, absolutely perfect. So here we go, there's all the parts on. We've mounted in those two ways, either with white tack underneath or if there's any holes, we've used those to our advantage. As you can see, we've got plenty of bodywork to prep and prime. Make sure everything's securely held on. As you can see, nice piece of white tack on the side fairing. And obviously these ones already have a point at the bottom, which is ideal for mounting them into our little spray stands. But again, just inspect everywhere, make sure everything's clean, you're happy with it, there's no more rough pieces of plastic. And once you are, I go through and start mounting them on my U-Star painting mats, pads. As again, there's links to these in the description. You go click on it, it takes a big long list, and you can find them in there. They're very handy, they're not too expensive. And I've had these for ages now and they're lasting very well. So we mount all the parts up. I do these in color order. They're going to be sprayed to make life easier. Keep them apart from each other. Any parts where you've used the opposite end, so you don't have the pointer hand, get your sprue cutters, cut them on an angle. That gives you a sharp point. Find a pre-used hole and pop it in. And as you can see, nice and secure. They're not going to fall off. They don't wobble around even when shaken. On these parts, if you give it a shake, make sure they don't hit each other. There's nothing worse than painting parts to have them touch or rattle around, hit each other. So move them around to the equally spaced, and once you're happy, yeah, uh, away you go. So on parts like on the front fairing, where we've got the, uh, the stick in, because it's quite a deep part, the stick doesn't quite reach. So mask and tape on another one to give the uh, extra length, and it'll make life a little bit easier and a little bit safer when painting. There we go, there's all our parts all assembled, degreased, mounted, ready for paint, uh, primer. All secure, we know they're not going to fall off. And we can now go to the paint booth. So we've got ultimate white primer, ultimate black primer, and the grey, which we'll use in a minute. As always, shake the living bejesus out of the primer uh, more than you think, just to make sure it's all thoroughly mixed, especially if it's sat around for a while. We're at 30 psi. 0.35 needle on the apex and we're just putting a very light mist coat down now because you're spraying white on white angle the part towards your light source and you will see the primer go down you will see the sheen of the primer as it lands now as per my primer video we're not hosing this on we're getting a very light mist coat down paying attention to all the angles recesses and everything we are not putting a wet coat down we are literally getting a nice fine mist coat down ensuring even coverage once the mist coat is down you can then start coming in and applying it a little bit thicker but as i say ensure you get equal coverage any parts like on the side where we added the ferns we have ca glue they're going to need a little bit more attention to make sure they're fully covered because the opaque see-through kind of thing ensure that you covered it with the primer so it may take a couple more coats on those parts look at it by eye you'll soon figure it out on the front fern, because this is blue and I want a little bit of a darker blue, we're going to prime in grey. doesn't make all that much of a massive difference, but we thought we should be priming in grey anyway. Um, so this is also a grey primer. Again, it's been shaken, 30 psi, 0.35 needle. Um, no problem at all. Nice thin coat all around. Make sure you get underneath all the little recesses. Uh, this is coming on to our third coat now. So yes, yeah, you can see, I'm just having a good look around to make sure we haven't missed anywhere. I haven't left any parts unprimed. Then that can just sit for a few minutes and dry off a little bit. Black primer next for our rear swing arm and frame. Again, make sure it's well shaken. 30 psi again. Same with all these primers. And again, nice thin coats. The black and the grey are a bit more forgiving than the white. But apply the same principles to them all and you really can't go wrong. Again, multiple angles to spray on this. So make sure you get them all all inside. So we did mention about filling in the rear of that swing arm. And yeah, you can do it. I know people use putty, plastic hard. Um, for me, I want this to be a nice, simple build. So we're just building it as is. Maybe we'll cover that at a later date in a different build. 
So nice even coat all around, making sure we get all the cut angles covered. Same with the actual frame itself, loads of angles on this, so really worth taking your time. Now, I prime day in, day out. I've been using this product for years, so for me, I probably prime a little bit quicker than most people, and how far I can push this product. But if you're unsure or new to it, apply a nice thin coat and let them dry. So we've got LP2, LP1, white and black from Tamiya, and we've got our LP4541 mix, I think it was. It is LP41 and 45. I think it was 60, it was five parts 41 to three parts 45. And obviously thin 50-50 as well. We've got our Tamiya lacquer thinner with our painted Al McNeish pipette holder. You can see how much of the LP paint I've used. I've gone through half a bottle of primer uh, of thinner already. Crazy. Apex. Um, 0.35 needle again. We're at about 15 psi this time now because we're onto the lacquers. We've got a grey from Fender. All the other parts are white as you can see. And they've been drying overnight. A good 12 hours in a nice warm environment approximately 20 degrees to 24 degrees c in my cave most of the time so everything dries pretty quick again we've got some medicine cups again you can find all these products listed in the uh, description down below click on the link you got our badger paint mixer ideal tool for mixing up the paint as you can see they do separate over time a couple of seconds whiz with the old badger paint mixer get them all mixed back up and we can then use the medicine cups to decant into and thin. Now, be aware doing this, the cheaper medicine cups that you buy from Poundland or cheaper ones online, they're a harder plastic. If you put lacquer thinner in them, they will melt. They also melt and can contaminate your paint as well. So bear that in mind. These are true medicine gray cups. Now I'm about to spill that paint. Give it a sec. Um, there you go. Whee! Oh, what happened? Um, so, yeah, it's worthwhile paying. It's a touch more, really. They're not that much more expensive for the good ones. And um, they last a long time. They really do. So, we thinned about 60-40. About 2.5 mil of paint, about 3 mil, 3.2 mil of thinner, roughly. And, again, we're going to start off with nice thin coats, building it up, making sure we get all the angles, all the different sides, the bottoms, tops, etc. There you go. Have a quick look. Again, you're spraying white on white, so angle it towards the light, and you will see the paint go down. Trust me, I do it all the time. That's what I'm doing when I'm moving it around. Nice thin coats. Build it up slow. The lower pressure helps with the lacquers. They don't need high pressure at all. Um, they spray a lot better at lower pressures. You're spraying a thinner paint, so it covers very well. Lower cowling next. Not going to show every single piece of paint in these. Like I say, we'll be here all day. You don't want to see a 20 minute video of painting. But I'm just covering the basics. Again, first coat over the larger parts. Just make sure you get all those angles. Make sure you get the tops where the panels join. And pay particular attention to the front and backs. Same with the tank as well. Build up nice and slow. Probably onto our third coat here now. Overall, I'll skip through it a little bit. Because like I say, you don't want to be seeing all the painting. But we're building up slowly, getting a nice sheen on the bodywork, as you can see. And I've sped up my spraying process a little bit more as well. Again, if you're unsure, take your time. Just apply several thinner coats rather than putting it on. I'm used to spraying these. I spray these things all day long. You can see how much I've gone through using half a bottle of lacquer thinner already. And they are absolutely superb paints. Very, very forgiving, the Tamiya LP paints. Now, this is our pre-mixed blue. We tested this a while back on spoons. This was the colour I chose. Very happy with it. Um, we're pre-mixed and pre-thinned as well. It's LP41 and 45. I think it was 5 parts 41 to 3 parts 45. It was something like that anyway. I completely forget. If you want to go back and have a look, um, I show it on Facebook. and uh, I'll confirm it in the next video as well. Again, we've done a grey primer because I just want that slightly darker tone. It's only going to darken it oh, microscopically. A tiny, tiny bit, but for me, um, and plus we get to show the grey primer being used as well. So again, all different angles, because this component can be seen into at the front of the bike, make sure you get underneath, through the sides, everywhere. You don't necessarily have to do where the actual tyre sits underneath, or certainly those side parts where they attach the forks. You need to ensure they're all fully sprayed. And again, nice even coat all around. Make sure we're happy with it. Have a good look. Use the light to your advantage. And if you are, we'll put it to one side. So this is about our third coat now. 
Three nice encodes. We're about 18 PSI again. Just checking we've got all the areas covered. All the angles done. Once we're happy, we'll leave this to dry. Beautiful color. Very happy with that mix. Um, I think it's pretty accurate to what I was looking for. Whether it's accurate to the bike, I'm not 100% sure. But very happy with the color. Um, that's for sure. Once you're done with the paints, make sure the rims are clean. Hey. Um, well, as your lids will get stuck. And to clean, a little bit of lacquer thinner for the LP Tamiya's. Bit of a backflow. Give it a shake to get any paint out of the colour cup. Grab your brush. Very easy paints to clean up. Give it a good brush around. Give it a backflow. Tip it away. Do it again. Job done. Just doing a colour change. It's a lot quicker. Now we're on to the LP1, the black. And again, thinned, 60-40. 15 to 18 psi will do them through the 0.35 apex again and again making sure we get all the angles all underneath done because again it's a part it's got multiple angles it joins onto other parts so you don't want any gaps of burr or prime of plastic showing through so it's worth just taking the time to ensure you get all those angles covered as you can see covers very very well nice gloss black really lays down really nice so a couple of coats on that and there we go. There's all the bodywork base painted. So we're going to let that dry overnight again before we come back for masking. And in the meantime, we're going to paint up our swing armor frame. So we've got LP48 sparkling silver. Now, the Tammy Metallics I test sprayed, and this is the color we're going to get. And that, for me, is spot on. LP11 is a little bit duller. We've got the Apex with a 0.2 mil fine needle conversion in it. Again, we're at 15 PSI, and we're going to thin it with the lacquer thinner with Retarder. Now, I've noticed that the metallics are a little bit thinner, so I've only been thin them 50-50. And again, nice light thin coats, building up slowly. It will build up quick because you're spraying it onto black. Well, don't hose it on, just build it up. Take your time, making sure you get all those angles. We've got to get inside um, the swing arm as well, so you get even coverage. Covers really well. Sprays absolutely fantastic. And sadly, we do get a little bit of dust land in this, which I'll rectify later on. So all we we'll do is we'll spray it, let it dry, and um, sand it back with some micro mesh, and just give it another couple of passes. But covers beautiful, absolutely phenomenal. You can see the dust just at the top up there on this left hand side. But we'll rectify that later. It's not a problem at all. Like I say, coverage phenomenal. One of the best cover and metallic paints I've used. They dry super fast, and the color is absolutely amazing. One thing I do want to try is using this with the normal Tamiya lacquer thinner and see if there's any difference in the finish. Uh, just an interesting experiment I want to do, and I'll probably do that at some point before the next video. So this is about our third coat now. So we've just been putting even coats all around. It's more important to pay attention to the angles rather than hose the paint on. So just really take your time. Make sure you get all those little recesses, nooks and crannies, from all different angles. It looks like I'm putting a lot of paint down. It's not real that much going down. Um, I'm mainly getting all the angles and recesses just to make sure we're evenly covered. Nothing worse than getting something assembled or painted and noticing a bare on prime part. Again, use the light to your advantage, angle it round. And you can see everywhere that you've painted. It's about our third coat on the frame as well, and this is coming up really well. As you can see, my fingers, the shine on my gloves is phenomenal. Is a really nice paint this. And again, check in, ensure we've got everywhere covered, and there we go. All done. A little bit of dust on that right hand part of the rear swing arm, but we'll rectify that in a little bit. But very happy with that colour. Glad I chose that. It's got just enough sheen without being too shiny. It's gone down, it's it's self-leveled, phenomenal finish. Very, very happy with that. Painted parts, right, so the side fairings are just white. We've got nice even coverage there. Fuel tank cover and the rear uh, exhaust cowling part that goes to the back of the seat. Again, beautifully colored. Can't see it that well on camera, but it's got a nice glossy finish. There's seat cover at the back. Again, nice gloss black. We've got a decal to go on the back of this. It sits along the back part just up top there. And that's the demarcation between the black and the white. But very happy with that as well. 
from Ferrin. Again, beautiful colour. Really happy with that colour. That's going to look really smart with the uh, star decals on it. So, beautiful. Very glad I mixed that colour and didn't stick to the original colour I chose. And our front fairing as well, which needs masking off, as too does our lower cowling. So, if you refer to your instructions, you'll see where they need masking. Look at the bottom. The bottom cowling needs a diagonal stripe up, as too does the front cowling as well. So, I like to cross-reference the decals to the decal call out look further through and as you can see we've got another angle of that lower cowl and show where it's fully masked cross-reference the decals the instructions together to ensure that you get in the right place and as you can see this has come out really well we do have some spotted dust at the top i'm going to point to them they're just there there they are you can see them at the top i'll grab some tweezers and show you there we go. A couple of little specks there. I'm probably being really fussy, but I can see them and they will annoy me. So we'll flat those off with some um, 8000 micro mesh and just give it another pass over. Just on a quick inspection. Happy how all turned out. All the seams have gone. No problems at all. And the same, the frame, beautiful. Very nice paint finish. Once this is detail painted and put some carbon on there, it's going to look absolutely phenomenal. Very happy with that color. I'm glad I chose that one. Very nice. Right, on to masking these parts. So we've got the Azu tape. I think we're going to be using the point, uh, sorry, the 1.5 and the 2.5 on this. I find keeping them in their little blister pack and in a bag keeps them clean and fresh. We've got our decal tweezers as well. And we're going to use our instructions, the decal placement instructions, and our decals as well to ensure we get everything in the right place. Always do tacky tape, run it on your finger, whatever. Just to ensure that you've detacked it. You don't need fully tacky tape to, to mask off paint. And use your reference of your instructions to get one point. And then keeping the tape taut. Follow it down to your second reference point. So we're just weighing up the options here. Making sure we get this top part exactly where we want it can be tedious but it's worthwhile taking the time once you've got one side on i've got my um micrometer and we're going to measure from one point to the other seems a bit anal but i like to make sure that these are really absolutely spot on so we're going to use one part measure the other and make sure we're equally spaced once i've done that i'm happy same for the top that way we know the masking is absolutely spot on. Got a straight piece across. Burnish it down with your finger or a cotton bud I like to use. And just double check everything. Like I say, it may seem a bit anally retentive doing this kind of thing, but OCD. But I like to make sure they're all done properly. So we pick a point. An equal point on each side. There's a fastener on each side that's in the same location. Measure it. Hold it. Flip it round. Line it up, and we're near enough spot on. So no problem there at all. Quick visual inspection. Double check with your decal layout. As you can see, I'm weighing up against the uh, decal cart on the back. We have a decal that goes kind of over this um, separation of the white and black. So I'm just ensuring it's in the right place on both sides. So time spent here is well worth doing. Use reference points on the decals, on the actual part. And once you're happy with it, you then commit to burnishing down the tape and fully masking off the rest of it for paint. Like I say, a few minutes spent. Just look at different points. Make sure it's all the same spacing, that your decal is going to cover it. If you're unsure, grab your decal sheet, look for the decal that's called out. I can put up against the paint and see where it's going to go. Now, for us, it's the two green and red that are down the bottom three quarters in the middle. They're the two decals that separate that. So I'm just ensuring that the point that I've masked, they are wide enough. And the black demarcation will probably just be underneath where they start. Once I'm happy, burnish it down. Some more masking tape. Fully cover all the edges. 
And again, same as always, preparation here is going to pay off massively. Burn chef them down with a clean cotton bud. Just to make sure you've got nice smooth edges. And this will give you a nice clean paint demarcation line. Once we're done, we come back with a thicker tape. Start filling in all the excess. Always detack it, especially the thicker paint uh, tape. Because when it's going to pull it off, it will be the thicker tape. Make sure you've got all the angles covered. Everywhere masked off. If there's any holes or anything, make sure you mask the back of them so you don't get paint blasting through there. Once you're happy, put it to one side and move on to the next bit. Tammy tape, by far the best tape to use. Um, I've used others. They always tend to bleed through or don't quite stick. And the Azu is, in my opinion, of Tamiya quality. Um, it's why we stuck at Ultimate, and it's why I rave about using it. And I don't know how I managed without it before. I honestly do not know what I used to do to manage without it. It must have been a real struggle. So that's the lower part done of the cowling, uh, the under cowling. Now we've got the front section to do. Again, using the combination of our instructions, the decal call out, and the decals themselves, we can see where it needs masking, why it needs masking, and make sure we get it in the right place. And for this, again, we have a decal that does a um, fade into the, um, the screen decal, which is right in the middle. You see two parts of it with Carrera up each side. It's got a gold and black trim as well. It's a black to red trim that goes into our black. So that's why we're painting it. So again, using the Azu 1.5 mil tape, we're following that D, well, not the demarcation, that seam as such on the cowling, following it all the way through, following the instructions to the letter. So make sure we get it lined up. Once we've got it lined up, we trim the front. Follow the same path. Follow it to the same point at the front and trim it again with our scissors to make sure we get that nice equal line right through the middle. Again, it's fiddly, it's a bit laborious, but the time taken here will pay off massively. Once you're happy that that's done, we can come in with some thicker tape. I like to put like a 2.5 mil above it, then go to the six mil. I just find the 2.5 is a little bit more flexible. Because the worst thing we can get on white is to get the black overspray through it. Again, I can't stress it enough, and I know it's like a broken record, but preparation will pay off massively here, as you'll see in a little bit, because when we unmask it, everything looks great. And again, thicker tape, well and truly detacked to fill in all the excess. And once that's done, get underneath as well, because again, we don't want any overspray coming through. And then pop our mount in from before. Make sure the edges are burnished down. You got your fingerprints off. And there we go. We are ready for the LP1 paint again. So we've been to spray booth. We've painted up three light coats again. Don't go too heavy on the masking, especially straight away. You really want to take your time building up the paint. We will end up with a step uh, between the demarcation. We'll do all those in a later video. We'll just let it fully dry and then take it back with some, say, I don't know, 8,000, 12,000 micromesh to get rid of that step because obviously we have a decal going here and we don't want the step of paint showing through the decal. I tend to unmask straight away. Take your time. Make sure you don't put your finger in any paint. This paint is dry. It's been sat there while I was um, retouching up the swing arm. So it's been sat there for a good 10, 15 minutes. So it is dry. It won't be fully cured. You probably still put a fingerprint in it if you tried. But for the most part, it is dry. I got very, very clean demarcation very very happy with that there's no overspray everything is clean so very happy with that one no problems at all front one's a bit more trickier to unmask you've not got as much to uh, play with so take out the mounting point and just really take your time there's a couple of points at the top of this um, cowl and you could snap quite easy so really take your time just ease it all off slowly because we don't be pulling any parts or paint off 
<laughs> Worst thing we could do now is start pulling paint off. So just take your time. Hence why we uh, detack all the tape as well. So there we go. All the masked. Put it on our mountain stick again. And again, very clean demarcation. Very happy with this. That extra time is well worth it. Both parts are done perfectly. These can now sit and cure. Then we come back and decal them in a later date. Right, so there we go, as you can see, happy with that, very, very happy with the masking, um, no real areas of concern at all. Once that's fully dried, we'll hit it with some MicroMesh um, 8000 probably, and it'll take the the raised edge of the paint. So I've always got to have masked it and painted it again, you're going to get a slight step. So we want to lightly wet sand that, I'll show that in a subsequent video, um, take that step away and that gives us a smooth demarcation into the colours. I think there's some decals to go in places anyway, so you want to get rid of that step for sure because you'll see it for the decal otherwise. But very happy how that mask can go, especially the black to white on the uh, from Calvin. Very, very happy with that. Um, swing on's come out well, very happy with the colour as well. A few dust spots which we rectified. Um, very happy with the colour though, it's a good match for other colours I've used before, and I'm glad I chose that one. That'll do me well. So that's going to sit and cure now. It's back in its protective plastic case under the bench. Um, and I think the next video, we'll try and focus on the engine a little bit, get some of that detail painted up, try and get it assembled, give it a wash, and then we'll come back in part six, I think it'll be, and probably get our decals down. So there we go. Thanks for all the feedback on the videos uh, from event last bench update. Warwick has been very helpful um, in collating all the, uh, the votes. He counted to three and only used one hand. So well done, Warwick. He's over there keeping quiet. <laughs> so 20, 30 minute videos is what you want to see, and that's fine by me. Um, keeping the video shorter means I need less footage. To get a 20 minute video, I need three hours of footage. That's, that's quite a bit of footage to do. And what I do is I go through, edit out all the fluff. We've discussed this before. Um, you don't want to see 20 minutes of me prime in something, because that's just boring as hell. If you want to see me prime, you can go look at other videos, the Subaru build. The primer video I did the other day and I'll show you prime in, in full depth. I just cut to the chase and say this is it. There's two seconds, three seconds of be priming. We're painting. There we go. And we move on. We'll get through the build a bit quicker then. But by keeping it a little bit shorter, I can keep the turnover of these videos. Last week was manic. If you watched my last bench update, it, it was a busy week last week with family and what have you. Um so I'm, I'm aiming, you know, at least once a week for a video, maybe a little bit shorter. As I said last time as well, I Make these videos, This I'm recording this a quarter past ten on Monday the 9th. And this will be probably on YouTube by 1pm the same day. By the time I've edited it, uploaded it, it should be on the channel in two and a half, three hours. You can see the time there and the date. Um, so once these are made, literally, I edit them and they're uploaded. They're never left. Um, once I grow all the footage, all the videos actually edited. I edited it last night. Um, I just need to do this and do the voiceover and we're ready to go. So... They are out there, so I know people are excited to see the videos, but if it's not on the channel, there isn't another one yet. It's as simple as that, and that's not being horrible, but it is. They, they go up straight away, but thanks for all the feedback on the video lens. That's what we're going to try and do, keep them at that length, and hopefully we'll get more out quicker. So there we are. So looking forward to getting back and doing some work on the engine. Been itching to get on that, but I like to get the body work out of the way, and we're done now, so that's great. The next major step is decals, and it's one of the trickiest parts on these bikes, in my opinion. This is a complex scheme, but it's not too bad. Um, we've got two sets of decals, which is always a relief. Hopefully we don't need to. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a 70 quid kit down the drain. But um, yeah, we, we've got them there if we need them. That's why I bought them. As you know, I've got duplicates to most of my bike kits, and that's why. So there we are. So big step, all the body work out of the way. We'll be back par five within the week. and uh, We'll get some engine work done. And uh, that's it. So as always, check out Intensive Scale Model Facebook page and forum. Check out my Paul ISM modeling page. Check out UMPRetail.com. Live the bench page, offer a hangout group, and of course, all the products I've shown today are linked in the description down below. Check out all the previous parts of this, loads of videos on the channel. And of course, um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not. Leave a comment, I'll reply to them all. As you know, if you leave a comment, you know I'll always reply to you. And uh, that's it. So thanks for watching today. I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>